Hello everybody, welcome back to another video by Dissociated. You may be a little confused. What is going on on the screen right now? Well, a lot of you guys asked us, can we please have a more fun, light-hearted video with everything else that's going on in the world right now? And we've been intending to do something more artsy to compare the difference between our skills, how muscle memory transfers between us with the amnesia that occurs between alters, and how our styles present in terms of art and you know preference for color preference for media and that sort of thing so what you're seeing right now is a drawing that me nin is doing on the new graphics tablet we bought all the drawings you're going to see today none of us have any experience drawing on a, a graphics tablet that you can draw directly onto before so there's no muscle memory or, you know, more personal experience using this type of media for anyone over anyone else. This was completely new to all of us the first time we'd done this. I'm trying to draw a self-portrait. <laughs> my god. Okay, I'm trying to draw a self-portrait. Please, I'm not a professional artist. Please don't bash my skills too much. We asked on Instagram and we asked on Twitter, what would you guys like to see us do to compare our drawing skills and, you know, just see how things differ. People asked for pictures of how we look in the inner world inside our headspace. The headspace is where the brain conceptualizes and visualizes the compartmentalization of our personality and our mental functioning, how we process different things and how the amnesia occurs for each of us has led to each of us having different internal views of ourselves. So if you watched our previous video, we explained why alters look different from each other. If this is still confusing to you, I would recommend going and watching that video. But essentially, as a rundown, images that are constantly seen through childhood or kind of fed to a child for example, this could be through the media, it could be because a child sees one person or one trait regularly, or perhaps it is visible in their favourite characters and things like that. Those things may contribute to why an alter looks the way they do, and what was necessary for the brain to create at around the time that alter was first needed. So if certain traits or certain characteristics reflect to that child's mind an idea of, okay, for me this represents strength, or for me this represents, you know, validity or trust or safety, then those are likely the kind of traits and characteristics that are going to become present in the inner view of an alter. So none of us see each other the way that our body looks in the mirror. When we are in the inner world, which is sort of like, um, <laughs> almost like a dream world in our, in our head that can allow us to interact with each other, allows these parts of the brain to interact with each other in order to process what's going on, in order to begin to process memory, and this fragmentation is less extreme there because it allows the brain a place to continue communicating with itself while still holding up all these amnesia walls and this separation and fragmentation of the conscious brain. This is what I look like in the body, and I look pretty similar in the world. As you can see from how I've drawn myself, my style is kind of sketchy. I don't usually use a lot of colour when I do my art, and also it's been a very hard week and I just stuck to the sketch for this one. As you can see, it's very basic. It's just outlines of basic features of my face, where my hair sits, what my expression generally is, and that I have a very hard time drawing mouths apparently. But yeah, that's the essence of how I draw. I definitely have more experience of drawing than anybody else in my system. Chloe used to be extremely artistic. I'm still particularly artistic, but I don't draw anymore as much as I would like to. Okay, so this next drawing might take a little bit more explanation because during this drawing, there were three switches. So right now, I was drawing this. So this, this is Nin starting to draw here with Kyle looking over my shoulder, right? I wasn't happy with the drawing I'd already done. I wanted to do more of a full body view, I suppose. That's why you can see me sketching out body features and shapes because I'm cis female. That's why it's starting off looking the way it is. 
I'm just using the same kind of brush I was before, very wide, very sketchy. I'm just trying to get shapes and it was around this time I started feeling very dissociated. By the time we move on to start drawing the face, I had switched out. This, I believe, was partially Kyle and then he switched out to a new altar that um, hasn't picked a name yet. This altar is the one that recently split off. I believe he's stuck between the names Callum and Connor. He didn't come with a name, he's been searching for a name. So he is male and yeah, you can see him crossing out the uh, the body shape of nope, we're nope, no female body, none of that please. <laughs> and I haven't seen him very clearly yet in sort of my mind's eye or in the inner world or anything like that, but I do know that he has brown hair. I now know from this drawing of himself that he has curly brown hair. Also, interestingly, Connor was a name that Chloe really liked as a child and she used to incorporate into stories a lot for some reason. I think it, it's the, um, the double N with the O's either side, the symmetry of it, I think I liked. But it's interesting that he would choose a name similar to that or potentially choose that name because it was familiar to and reassuring to us when we were younger or to Chloe when she was younger. So as of about now, there's been another switch. You can see that there are now lines, gaps in between the outline of this person. Still looking relatively masculine, right? First thing they've gone to do is high cheekbones or sunken cheekbones I suppose and very dark eyes and a lot of this sketchy sort of void like I'm not even really sure how to describe it it's, it's almost like how dissociation feels and this style is very 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 loose they haven't changed the brush they've used a really wide and thin brush which is not the kind of brush that personally I would choose to do when doing details like the face like they're doing right now. Now the person who's drawing this you can see that they're using a lot of black. The person that is drawing this is a persecutor altar. We've not introduced this altar on the channel before, I don't think that they will ever be on the channel, I am not comfortable with them being on the channel and I don't think that they have any particular interest in being part of it. This altar is a persecutor called Dark and he is one of the first altars that I knew about, or that Chloe knew about. When I first was told about having DID, my awareness of my altars was very limited, and I didn't really see faces or anything like that at the start. Well, I did, but I didn't connect that with the DID. It's, it's complicated and confusing, but Dark, I, I named dark as a nickname and he took that because I guess it fits but I saw him as just sort of a a dark shadow not even a shadow of a person just sort of like a mist a black kind of swirling mist and this mist would tell me things that aren't very pleasant like you know you're horrible you deserve to die you deserve everything bad that's ever happened to you you're disgusting you're a horrible human was just very angry and obviously hurting a lot. It's interesting to see how he's drawing himself and all this sort of sketchy shapes and the it almost looks like broken glass kind of effect and crosses, noughts and crosses, the sort of very prominent eyes and not really being able to see much else. So he is black, not black as in the race, but that the colour black, everything is black. And I've never been able to get a solid view of what his face looks like. It's always just either when I was Nina, the shadow outline of a human body or as Chloe, just sort of a black swirling mist. So it's interesting to have this representation of how he sees himself. It does seem to line up with sort of an incorporeal body image of this feeling of being shattered or, or crossed out. There's a lot of sketchy kind of crosses and like dashed lines and these sort of broken squares and triangle shards. I guess that would be representative of the way that he feels. I'm not going to try and put words in his mouth, but 
a lot of the time alters appearances and how they form in terms of are they non-human, are they male, female, non-binary, gender fluid, how old are they, what do they look like, how tall are they, it says a lot about how the brain has incorporated a traumatic experience and how it is visualizing that on a metaphorical level. I also find it interesting that he keeps putting in that um, kind of dash, broken dash on his forehead, like across his forehead, almost like a wound through his skull. I keep noticing it going back to that and just a lot of black clouds. So you can see the difference between the three styles so far. Mine was very, very basic, but clear. You could see what I was trying to do. You can see that I was just trying to get down my facial features and that's about it. And I would have been a lot more intense with detailing and things like that if I was doing a full piece. Whereas Dark has really got into this. Like this has been, I don't know, I think this whole drawing based on the, you can see the time in the top right corner of the screen. I think before I cut this down, it was about an hour. So that's actually really interesting to me because I didn't know that he would enjoy art. I'm not sure if he's done it before. There's, there's those lines going again over the mouth this time as well. We've had alters before draw images of them with their mouth sewn together and things like that, or their mouth taken away or their eyes taken away. The alters that I've spoken to, at least one of them who has drawn themselves like that a lot, is actually mute. I guess the brain <laughs> represented that because they were told that they couldn't talk about what happened. They weren't allowed to share what happened. They weren't allowed to tell anybody. It had to be kept a secret. I don't know what Dark holds. This is the full image. You can see pretty much just eyes and a lot of sort of shattered fragments. It's almost like he's looking through some kind of broken mirror or a cloud. I can see so many crosses and sort of glitchy looking squares which is really interesting. He's the only one in our system who has a sort of incorporeal body other than the ghost alter Omega. So I really appreciate that he did that and it looked like it might have helped. I was expecting Kyle to draw something actually because Kyle is well renowned in our system for being really bad at drawing and he really doesn't like it. If you found this interesting and a decent distraction then maybe we can do more videos like this depending on who fronts when. As you can see we only really got two or three alters to do this this week because we can't control when we switch out and when people do switch out there's no guarantee that they're gonna want to sit down and do something that I've asked them to do. I hope that you stay safe everybody, I hope that you enjoyed this more calm distracting video with a more artistic take on how amnesia develops between alters and how that can then affect skill and taste and preference regardless of whether that is just personal preferences towards things or the way that it actually presents when an alter is using the body. Lots of love everybody, bye!